Okay, so what we're going to do today is put some Keel Easy on the 575 Mark III. Okay, and the way I'm going to do it is when you grab it by the surf handle over that side, um, the whole kayak tips to the right. So when you're coming back into the beach, your rod should be inside the rod chute, being the fish hatch, or they'll be in the transit holders up the back, so preferably inside. So when you flip it up or when you pick it up from the surf handle on the left-hand side, you preferably the kayak will tilt uh, to the right and and drop onto the sand and you drag it by the surf handle up onto the beach. Uh, we do this regularly throughout South Australia so and obviously around Australia and South Africa and around the world. So you want this to, the keel easy to go along this edge here. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to mark it with a uh, silver felt pen, Ben and Nico, uh, just very carefully along the side of the hull. Uh, just as the grass touches it. So when you put the four inch keel easy on the hull, you'll actually have a covering of about one and a half meters down this side. So when you do drag it up onto the beach, it's solely on keel easel. So we'll go to the next phase. Okay, we're back. Uh, so right now we have the back contact points about here. And it's going slowly down the kayak on a slight angle, about five degrees. So these are the markings uh, there, going down the kayak, and that's the limitation of the grass. All right, and that's going to be our leading edge of the five inch keel easy. So when the keel easy wraps on, it's about four inches wide, it's about as wide as, wide as my four fingers. It'll wrap from here around the base of the kayak, and that's where we'll terminate it. So the full four inch length going here, right down the edge of the kayak, so when you pick it up by the surf handle, uh, it will uh, strike the sand, and this will save your gel coat. Okay. Okay, so we're uh, we're back off the yard, and uh, just need to identify where we've run up onto the beach once or twice. Um, it's just striking the actual gel coat itself. Uh, I've got the four inch out laid out on top of the kayak. Uh, back to the scuppers. This is a two metre length. Um, it's a almost a six metre uh, fishing ski. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use about one and a half metres up the back and I'm going to use about half a metre up the front. So we're going to bring the keel easy forward to about here. And what we're going to do is we're going to taper, tape the keel easy into the keel here and then use uh, the two metres I've already got uh, from the keel itself back along the top edge of the four inch keel easy to create a slight overlay um, probably about a meter uh, so we'll bring it all the way back to around about here and we'll use this one and a half meter length on the back right hand edge or the back uh, right hand edge of the actual ski itself so when you pick it up by the surf handle uh, she'll strike the keel easy not so much the gel coat so we're basically just it's like a preventative measure on this um, so uh, bear with me it's a short video but hopefully in depth so we're now going to apply the four inch keel easy here and we're going to try and apply the four inch keel easy at the back and um, i'll try and walk you through this whole process um, to apply it you obviously need a heat gun and a welder's glove uh, that's the best way to apply it um, and particularly when you're going around a curvature of some type or a concave area but uh, we're going to be it's all going to be convex on the kayak today so i'll, I'll show you the basics and then um, hopefully uh, you'll get the idea to apply the keel easy on the gel coat uh, to try and protect these stealth kayak skis. You probably don't need it so much for an Epic um, or a Fan or you know, other Finn brand names. Um, it's particularly the stealth brand gel coat is susceptible to scratching and imperfections immediately after striking sand for some reason. The Mark I kayaks from 2010 onwards, right through till about 2014, were quite good. The Mark II and the Mark III's, their gel coat, uh, in my opinion, and this is only my opinion and maybe uh, two or three other people that have owned one series, two series and three series, this being the third series, uh, have actually noticed a decline in the hardness and the resistance to scratching than the Mark One. So the gel coat technique has changed for stealth kayaks or stealth uh, fishing skis South Africa, and it hasn't changed for the better at all. Um, 
it's actually, I believe, inferior to uh, the product that they first released in regards to robustness. This is my opinion only and not a statement of fact. So take it from, take that from, uh, take as much as that as from what you will. So there you go. Okay, back again. Uh, so basically round off the corners, I've got a 750mm section here. Um, I've got about an 8 inch taper. Um, it's 4 inches wide, so uh, basically mount a rad circle. And then uh, tapered back about 8 inches and swept it in. Uh, I'll now cut this, and that'll be my keel protector, uh, but not the actual front of the bow. Okay, I'm using a 70% uh, pure alcohol, uh, medical grade. Uh, I'm just going to prep this front section and lay the keel easy on. Okay, so I've got the primary layer on, uh, going down the ski. Uh, try and centralise it as best you can. And then uh, basically I'm going to run a 2 inch keel easy from the nose of the kayak, being the bow, across the top of the keel. I'm going to try and achieve a full length to the back of the 4 inch of the keel easy, uh, just to ensure that that is the prominent part of the front section of the ski, uh, to strike the sand. Because the only time this thing hits the deck is on the sand. Or accidentally on your driveway or concrete. So basically you want to be able to put this kayak down on the rudder at the rear and the nose on the ground, whether it be a pathway, etc. etc. And you want the kill easier to strike at the back at the front. Um, so you don't have to baby the ski all the time. So you basically want the kill easier to strike first, nothing else. So about halfway there at the front, and then I'll show you the back. So what I've done is I've just laid it twice now. And so what we've got to do is we have to use a heat gun or a hairdryer, as long as it gets hot enough, and a welder's glove or a rigger's glove. And you want to swing that polycarbonate over the top, right on top of the bow. Not too far up. Uh, you don't have to be too ridiculous. You can add, add some later if you wish. Well, you just want to make sure that, uh, that the bow is protected. Uh, it's pretty hard stuff. This is the composite one. And this softer looking stuff is the plastic one. The plastics one's more pliable and the composite one is not. The plastic original has got a brown glue adhesive and the composite polycarbonate keel easy has got a clear which uh, gives, you the, uh, gives you the appearance of black glue underneath. Um, I've been told by uh, Kayak Australia that the keel easy original is probably the better product. I don't think they're continuing with the composite one. Now, as you're wrapping it around, you'll see it goes around rather uniformly, but on this such convex edge, you may need to just put some cuts in here just to allow it to wrap around. Uh, it may not be perfect, but uh, this polycarbonate stuff certainly going to protect your ski, and that's what we want. Um, we can trim it up a little bit later with a really hot, nice, scalpel without touching the gel coat and make sure that's a really nice curved edge okay so far so good so basically now what i've got is i've done the front um, i'll do the back in my own time uh, the back section is going to have a one and a half meter section or no 1250 section uh, that'll go on the obviously the drag side of the uh, stealth ski whilst using the surf handle um, these, this is the scupper section for the uh, live bait well, which I'll, um, I'll talk about that later. Uh, these are the scuppers for the foot wells. So when you're up and about, uh, basically you can pull water in or pull water out of the uh, live bait tank. And you can constantly pull water out of your feet. So you basically have a really nice dry ride. Um, this is the finished product here. Uh, you, that's the original section there. And this is the new composite keel easy as opposed to the original keel easy i actually prefer the original keel easy now to give you an idea uh, basically you've got a set of scissors here you basically just do anything you like once it's on it's basically on the only way you're going to damage uh, the bow now and just underneath the bow itself is when you have blunt force trauma um, which will actually deform the hull itself and then bounce back out 
or if you were to have a sharp object um, like a reef and slamming into it. There's only so much composite, I mean carbonate, um, polycarbonate can actually take, but this is rather robust and this is going to protect the ski for its lifetime. And as you can see, this is the result. Nice clean result. Now this is from another angle. And basically, not a bad result. Uh, it's not going to add any drag whatsoever. Um, nice clean lines, as you can see from the side. So that's basically the front of the kayak done. Um, it's cost me four meters of this material uh, to do where I want to do. Uh, that, that includes all bungee cords um, un underbound uh, with Keel Easy. So the bungee cord doesn't um, doesn't cut through the varnish or the gel coat of the actual kayak on top. Uh, we'll address that later. And I might even run a little bit across the rudder. Um, I've got an extended rudder I made uh, in the last of the series with the 525. This being the 575. And it's just taken a bit of a battering already. But it's holding up pretty well with two-part epoxy metal, uh, metal putty. So that's the other section that's going to go on uh, this side. And that's the 575 wrapped with Kill Easy on the bow. So we're completed. Uh, any of these lift points you can see here is actually just um, silver marker. So that's all nice and flush. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, soldier on.